There will be a community grab-and-go supper this Wednesday, February 24th. Uh, Featured this month is Olive Garden Chicken Pasta Casserole. Sounds really good with uh, brownies and salad and and water. Uh, So come join us from 5 to 6 p.m. will be the the serving time. Uh, Come with, with your cars again and we'll serve you outside on the east side of the church. Uh, There will be our annual plant sale coming up this April. Notice your email or your newsletters for uh, March and April with more information. Our opening committee has decided to have in-person worship next Sunday, February 28th at 10 a.m. in our sanctuary. Uh, We'll also record the the service, which will come on later that afternoon. Uh, We'll follow the guidelines we established last fall for COVID safety, including being socially distanced, wearing masks, antiseptic, no touching of hymnals or offering plates, etc. A full list of health safety measures will be in the newsletter coming out this week. And speaking of, uh, be sure and get your articles in by tomorrow for our March newsletter. So at this time, we'll turn to the call to worship, and Diane will lead us. Let's read responsively. Lord Jesus, we remember how you spent 40 days in the wilderness. Help us us set set aside aside this time time to grow grow close close to you. you. We remember how you were tempted by the devil. Help Help us us be so grounded in your your word that that we we can can fight fight any temptation. temptation. We remember how you were victorious by the power of the Spirit. Help Help us be moved by by your Spirit as as we we worship worship you now. now. In In Jesus' Jesus name, name. Amen. amen. We'll now sing our opening hymn, Beneath the Cross of Jesus, hymn number 297. Beneath the cross of Jesus, I fain would take my stand. The shadow of a mighty rock within a weary land, a home within the wilderness, a rest upon the way from the burning of the noontide heat and the burden of the
Amen. We would invite the children to come closer to the screen at this time for our children's time. We appreciate you so much and your families. Um, and we're going to sing together now where children belong. is where children belong, welcomed as part of the worshiping throng. Water, God's word, bread and cup, prayer and song, this is where children belong. Well, we're beginning a new season of the church year called Lent. Lent is a word that means lengthen. It's a short for lengthening the time when we remember how Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days and prayed. We remember how he suffered on the cross and, and then how he was raised uh, even from the dead. So uh, it's a time to tune up our lives, become more like Jesus. So. I brought my, can my uh, radio today. This is a, a special radio. Uh, it's used by people in the world that may not have electricity or, or batteries. Um, it's a wind-up uh, radio. And uh, if you get it on the right station, you can hear. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a... But what happens if you uh, change the station a little bit? It gets kind of fuzzy. So it's important to tune it up so we get the right sound. Right? right? The same thing with our lives. We need to have them tuned up uh, during these 40 days to uh, be clear and become more like Jesus to be tuned in to Jesus' voice and to God's ways. And maybe there are some things you can do different. Maybe there are some things you can get better at, and that's what we try to do, get a new habit. Um, maybe uh, it's a habit for some of you might uh, do some more reading. Those of you who can read or listening to Bible stories, uh, spending some time, more time in prayer is a good thing to do in these 40 days, but maybe there's some habits you could change about maybe not yelling at your sister or hurting uh, your brother, uh, doing instead something kind for each other, because we want to replace that bad habit with a good habit, and that's what we're trying to do in this season of Lent, something more like what Jesus would do in following him. So think about some things you could do better, ways you could be better, and uh, spend this time, these 40 days uh, before Easter, to become more like Jesus. Should we pray? Thank you, Jesus, for helping us to tune our lives to you, to become more clear in our walk with you and our ways. Help us, Lord, to be more kind to the people in our lives, to listen to more carefully to you and to others, to be obedient to our parents, uh, to learn more about you every day and become more like you. In your precious name, Lord Jesus, amen. At this time, we'll turn to our prayer of confession that will be up here on the screen. And uh, we'll... Uh, We'll do this one uh, responsively. So one more screen there, Robert, I think. There we go. Lord, we confess our day-to-day -day failure to be truly human. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we confess that we often fail to love with all that we have and are, often because we do not fully understand what loving means, often because we are afraid of risking ourselves. Lord, we confess to you. Lord, we cut ourselves off from each other and we erect barriers of division. Lord, we confess to you. 
Lord, we confess that by silence and ill-considered word, we have built up walls of prejudice. Lord, we confess that by selfishness and lack of sympathy, we have stifled generosity and left little time for others. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Help us listen to your word of forgiveness, for we are very hard of hearing. Come, fill this moment, and free us from sin. Amen. Lord Jesus, thank you for your example of 40 days of prayer and fasting, showing us how to contend with temptation through prayerful application of Scripture against the temptation of Satan. We thank you, Lord, for your healing presence, uh, for your help for Dorothy Ehlers as she's coming along. We, ask, we thank you that Diane is healing as well, her hand, and we ask uh, help for Joanne Palm, friend of uh, Lois Anderson, comfort for the family of Denise Sears, who passed away recently, and also for the family of my Aunt Carol, who went home to be with the Lord this past week. Help us grow in our faithfulness and following you, Lord Jesus, this Lenten season. Um, guide those who continue to fight COVID-19. Uh, give people courage to get the vaccines. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for your peace in our world and our country. Peace with justice. And we pray in Jesus' name you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time... We have a recording of our Ignite Praise Band from March 1st of 2020. And I uh, love him. Let's stand as we sing together, Our God. Greater, 
Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? What could stand against? Amen. You may be seated. And certainly one of the things we're beginning to focus on is the cross, which is a most cruel form of execution ever invented and really was only a short period of time in history that the Romans did this. Uh, I think to emphasize God's willingness to sacrifice fully for us at the cross, love ran red. a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and
hope is found here on holy ground. Here I bow down. Here I bow down. Here arms open wide. Here, here save my life. Here I bow down. Here I bow at the cross of the cross. I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in all of you. Where I walk and run, and my sin washed white, I hold on to you. I hold on to you, Thank you again for your faithful stewardship and giving to God's work here uh, through the Havelock United Methodist Church, either our online uh, www.havelockumc.org uh, or uh, mailing checks in and bringing checks to the church. Thank you so much. Uh, one of the things that those gifts go toward is... Uh, toward equipment to enable us to do these services and we're working on the sound right now uh, trying to improve that and, yeah, as, as we go along. At this time we'll be sharing the epistle lesson from 1 Peter chapter 3. I'm reading 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 18 through 22. For Christ also suffered for sins, once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few that is, eight persons were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Amen. Our meditative thought for February is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, known as the love chapter, and another word for love is charity. Although I speak with tongues of men and of angels, and though I prophesy and understand all. Although I have all faith, so mountains may be removed. And though I feed the poor and give up my life, if I have not charity, if love does not flow from me, I am nothing. Jesus, reduce me to love. Jesus, reduce me to love. Love is patient and kind. Love is not envious, not proud but gentle and meek, seeks not its own way. Love sings when Jesus prevails, believes and endures all things. 
love hopes and bears every wrong, and love never fails. One season I was a child, I spoke and I thought as a child, but when I turned to a man, such ways put aside. Though now we see through a glass, but then we shall see face to face. Though now abide faith and hope, the greatest is love. If I have not charity, if love does not flow from me, I am nothing. Jesus, reduce me to love. Jesus, reduce me to love. Jesus, reduce me to love. The gospel lesson comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts. And the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. May God bless this to our, uh, this reading to our understanding. There was a couple who was having an argument as they were driving down the road and the husband probably wasn't paying attention to his speed and so the patrolman behind them uh, pulled him over and, and uh, said, uh, you know, you're going uh, 75 in a 40 uh, mile an hour speed zone and uh, the guy said, oh no, I, I, I never go that fast. I certainly wasn't going 75. And his, his wife turned to the patrolman and said, oh no, he was going 80. <laughs> and she, he kind of gave her a, a dirty look, you know. And, and he said, I'm going to have to write you up too because one of your taillights is out. Um, oh really? The husband said, I didn't know the taillight was out. And his wife said, oh, you've known that for weeks. <clears throat> Another dirty look. And then the patrolman said, I'm going to write you up because you don't have your seatbelt on. What? Oh, oh, I, well, I, you know, I just took my seatbelt off as you were coming up, for, sir, you know, officer. And his wife said to the uh, officer, no, he never wears his seatbelt. <laughs> well, he was getting red-faced about now, and he was beginning to shout at her. Um, <clears throat> you better shut up or you're going to get yours, something of that sort. And the officer said to his wife, so does he always talk this way to you? And, and his wife said, only when he's drunk. <laughs> <clears throat> so possibly he could have done better, right? And we can all do better. We could all improve can't we? Well, it kind of reminds me of a story of this man who uh, did better because of his uh, fiance, who was kind of bossy, but she helped him because uh, she told him to stop smoking, and he did, and that helped him, and then told him he should stop swearing, and 
he did, and, and finally she told him to stop gambling, and he said, well, you know, I, I stopped that. It's the best thing I ever did. And so his friend said to him, so why didn't you marry her? Well, as soon as I reformed from all these things, I realized I could do better. <laughs> well, it's not enough just to say no to temptation. We need to do better. We need to do better. Uh, we need to say yes to what is much better. God's ways are so much better, it's not even close. See, Jesus didn't just stay in the wilderness. He didn't grovel in temptation. He got out there and he proclaimed the gospel, the good news of the kingdom, the very best for our lives. See, if we concentrate on the negative, you know, things we know are wrong, eventually we'll give in to it. We can't just say, oh, I, I won't eat that sweet thing. I won't eat that sweet thing. I won't eat that sweet thing. Well, eventually you're going to eat that sweet thing because you're thinking about it all the time, right? But instead we should say, I will eat God's better thing. I will eat God's best thing, God's word, God's presence. Love God more than dessert, right? <laughs> Love God more than any other temptation that you may be facing uh, right now. Love God more. I can do better. I can do God's best. In today's gospel, Mark tells us that prior to his public ministry, Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness. He was put to test by Satan and the devil who offered him reasons to do better like wealth and power and prestige and adulation. Satan was sent packing by Jesus through the Word of God, and we can learn from that as well. When we are tempted, we should remember God's Word is what uh, is our power against Satan and against temptation uh, as well. Then Mark says that he went to Galilee to proclaim the good news, that the time has come, that the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Uh, the crowds were amazed at Jesus' deeds and his sayings. And more than that, how he lived it out. Uh, Jesus didn't just talk about it, he did it. We are builders of God's kingdom of love when we let Jesus in. This is an ancient tradition it's, that we do it during Lent. It's called fasting. Fasting. It is a time to not just get rid of something, but to put something on. Uh, not just to stop eating, but to begin praying. Uh, not just to not eat, but to begin serving uh, someone in a special way. We literally must pray ourselves out of the wilderness. Even though this is a frightening time, we don't need to panic because God is with us. And God's Spirit is with us and He will help us through. Jesus says that we will be known by our fruits, by the way we live. He says, we are people who are happy as they show mercy. We are people who are peacemakers and, and receive peace. We are people who hunger and thirst after righteousness and, and become righteous and holy. We are people who forgive and forget. We are people who leave the judgment of others to God. We are people who have faith and trust in God's blueprint for living. We have a genuine faith in Christ that not only says something but does it. Repent and believe the gospel. Repentance is, is turning around and doing it differently. And that's our opportunity we have in this, these 40 days. Maybe some of us need to turn off the TV a little more and read the Bible. Maybe some of us need to stop chatting on social media and start chatting with the God of the universe, our creator. Maybe some of us need to quit the habit that we know is destructive and choose a better habit, a more godly habit. With God's help, we can do better. 
Let us pray. Thank you, God, for your help. We struggle in this life. We know we're sinners. We know we're, we fall short. We can do better by your grace, by your help. Help us in this, this season, this opportunity of 40 days before Easter, that we can become more like you. We can become better in our thoughts and better in our actions, better in our prayer. Lord, thank you and for your example that leads us forward. In, in your precious name, Lord Jesus, amen. I invite you now to our closing hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. dear Lord, send us forth on a journey to Jerusalem, to the cross, to the grave, and beyond, to life eternal. We thank you, Lord, for walking with us in this journey, giving us power over temptation, and be helping us become more and more like you with every step. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we go. Amen. Amen.